I want to welcome you to our video devotional for today, Monday, October the 18th, 2021. We're going to read today from 1 Peter 1 through through 9, and then we're going to discuss a very important subject, I think, for all believers. Here's what it says. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away, <clears throat> reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this, you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved, distressed by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith be much more precious than gold that perishes, though it be tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, who having not seen, you love. Though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So in our devotions this week, we're going to be discussing joy. Now, I want to make this so clear at the start. Joy is not the word fun. Fun has to do with entertaining, exciting, pleasurable, and cool as being opposed to boring. Fun is more about play or playfulness. Too many followers of Jesus Christ have bought into the secular modern version of the gospel that states, to make the gospel relevant, we must make it fun. I've searched all over. I'm still trying to find a scripture that relates to that doctrine. This is particularly true as it relates to design ministries to youth and children. If it's not fun, our kids are not attending youth meetings, children's church, and our adults will find a church which intends to entertain rather than challenge the constituents to mature in Christ. I know you're sitting out there and you say, well, you're just a killjoy. No, I'm, I'm really not a killjoy. In fact, I don't think anybody enjoys life more than I do. The truth is that church was never about play or fun or entertainment. However, we live in such an entertainment, fun culture, or at least a pursuit of it, <laughs> everywhere, that if we don't work hard to have fun with whatever we do at church, we won't attract Christians, let alone unbelievers, to our fellowship. I sat in a church service in Fort Collins, Colorado, where the teaching pastor started, he actually started his teaching by stating, the reason we do church is to have fun. Wow. I personally equate the fun doctrine with the text in 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn away their ears from the truth and be turned aside to fables. I want to say to you again, I want to repeat this again, joy and fun are not the same word. Now, it's got to be clear to all of us who haven't had our, our face buried in the sand that our culture depends on entertainment to survive. Think about it. Billions of dollars spent nationwide on entertainment. From movies to sports to theater, you name it, we're into entertainment. During the current pandemic, the when entertainment was shut down in most of the country, the pandemic did not slow, it grew. The natives became restless. And if you don't believe me, turn on your television today and watch 100,000 fans without masks participate as spectators in college football games. They're having fun. Now, let's be quite frank about it. They 
if they're Texas fans, they weren't very joyful. They were defeated this year by both Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Sorry, had to throw that in. On the other hand, Oklahoma fans are cheering and delighting and defeating a Texas football team. But that's just fun. That's just fun. Our, our text instructs us on what we are to rejoice. Here's a list right out of the text that we read very clearly in in 1 Peter chapter 1, 3 through 9. Here's the list of what we are to rejoice about. The abundant mercy of God being begotten to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, having an undefiled and incorruptible inheritance, and for a place reserved in heaven for us, for the keeping power of salvation provided by God through faith. In this, greatly rejoice, celebrate, take delight. The source of joy is God. Now, never have I said today that We shouldn't enjoy life. We should, because life itself is given to us by God. I never said we shouldn't have fun, but I have clearly said the church wasn't designed to have fun. We've lowered the power of the gospel by believing we had to entertain the people who attend church. But listen, life was never meant to be used up or exhausted on our pleasures. It was meant to be lived to the glory of God. In living life to God's glory, we will find a pleasure that brings deep satisfaction, which we call joy. Let's pray. I I just pray today, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that there'll be a conviction over those who watch this video if they have spent so many hours of the week in pursuing entertainment at the expense of ignoring their life conforming to the image of Jesus Christ. I pray you'll help all of us. We're in desperate need today of a greater hunger and thirst for righteousness. Stimulate that in us by the Holy Spirit, I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Grace and peace today. God bless you, and may the very joy of the Lord fill your heart.